Hey, my name's Ryan, and you're watching That Random Geeky Guy. Hey all, so thank you very much for joining me for this video. Uh, today we are talking about this which is the Corsair K65 uh, Alux or Lux RGB mechanical keyboard. Um, now, the reason I wanted to talk about it is it's a keyboard that I've been using uh, for a short time now, uh, and I kind of just wanted to share a real kind of basic overview of my experience of it, talking about specifications, so on and so forth. It is quite a popular keyboard. Um, so, mechanical keyboards. Mechanical keyboards, it's a bit of an interesting subject. So. Um, those older who are watching or really kind of into the more vintage tech will, will have heard of something called the IBM Model M mechanical keyboard. It's kind of like the OG of keyboards. Um, so kind of back in the day, the keyboards being mechanical was kind of normal. That's kind of kind of what happened. And as things progressed, we kind of worked towards uh, what are known as membrane keyboards. So these are kind of the uh, those kind of cheap um, kind of ten pound keyboards that have uh, have rubber domes underneath as opposed to a mechanical switch. Uh, and, and then we've kind of circled back round and now actually mechanical keyboards which were kind of in the very first era of membrane keyboards, mechanical keyboards were known as the, you know, the, the inferior counterpart as opposed to this kind of modern technology, has now become the, the premium choice uh, and unfortunately that's also reflective uh, in the cost. So I want to take some time just to talk about the, uh, the, the, the K65 uh, and give you a basic overview. So first things first, it is full RGB, completely addressable, and you can utilize Corsair's IQ software to get some really, really amazing effects. Now, what's cool about this is that there are loads of different things that are available to download from their social, um, I guess their social kind of uh, forum, where you can download different programs of different kind of color combinations, as well as programming macros and other sorts of bits and pieces. The general design of the keyboard, uh, so the, the K65 is what's called 10 keyless, so it doesn't have uh, the number pad on the far right. Now you tend to find for gaming that's a better solution. You've got more room for your mouse, uh, and unless you're doing high productivity tasks, a lot of data entry, having that, that keypad on the end is not really that necessary. Now going back to the design, as you can see, the overview of the actual keyboard, we've got that aluminium, or should we say brushed aluminium, sturdy kind of base plate uh, to the back of the keyboard, and that adds some real structure. Uh, and, and as a result, you get very, very little deck flex on the keyboard. But at its current price bracket, which is between about 110 and 120 pounds at time of filming, you would expect that level of quality. Now, the one that I'm using is sporting uh, Cherry MX Red keys. These are linear. This means you don't get that kind of click, that clack of, of a blue key that most typists would be used to. So as a result, it's much better when gaming. You're not going to have people complaining as much, uh, on the other hand, of Discord or whatever other voice service you use from hearing your keyboard, uh, which I think is a good thing. I did have a blues keyboard before this, uh, and as many of the people who I game with would tell you, it, you could definitely hear it. So um, yes, red linear, they work for me. Some people like browns because it kind of gives you that balance. You get that tactile feedback uh, of, a, of a bump as you push the key, but it is quieter than blues. Um, and the good thing about Corsair is they give you a great selection of keys uh, to choose from. Now, let's look at the keycaps. So the keycaps themselves are double shot keycaps. This means that actually they should wear a lot better long term rather than pad printed keys where you'll find the lettering will fade away and you also don't get the RGB lighting effect coming through them. Now, when you've got individually addressable uh, RGB LEDs inside each key, uh, you really kind of want to get the very best from that. On the back of the keyboard, there is a USB pass through. Uh, that USB pass through, you know, you can use that um, just to kind of ad hoc if you want to just kind of sync your phone, plug something in, plug in a, a USB drive, something like that. But actually, from a charging perspective, it works. It's not going to give you fast charge, but it still does work from a charging perspective. And you can also use your mouse as well if you so choose into the into the back of that one. Um, beyond that, like I said, my experience so far has been exceptionally positive. Um, whilst it's got adjustable polling rates, what it, how it works out of the box works really well for me. Um, and I also like the fact that the adjustable RGB and, and the profiles work beyond just the traditional keys, but also all the way up to the volume keys at, uh, at the top. Um, and then obviously you can customize down to macro keys as well. The uh, wrist rest across the bottom is, is comfortable, it works, um, and it's kind of, 
I'd say try it because it isn't the biggest in the world and it's not the smallest. For me, I haven't got the biggest hands in the world, so it works quite well for me. Uh, I think somebody with, with quite large hands, they might find actually they're not touching it and they wouldn't use it. Um, but as a whole, it, it works great. There's a huge amount of choice of keyboards out there now, especially from a mechanical keyboard perspective. You will find uh, a lot of brands you might not have heard of, um, searching through uh, the likes of Amazon, eBay, uh, as well as all of the uh, computer component websites. You'll find some, some Chinese brands that are producing uh, basically reproductions of Cherry MX switches. Um, and then you've got the obvious big brands from Logitech, from Corsair, from Razer. Razer actually produced their own switches as well. Um, and you can get some really high quality stuff from as low as £50. Actually look out for one of my future videos. What I'm actually going to do is go through some of those keyboards uh, and, and talk about what you can actually get in terms of value for money. But for me, this Corsair, even at the 100 110 £120 pound mark, it's an exceptionally good quality keyboard. Uh, and from the short time that I've spent with it, which is about eight weeks now, um, I'm certainly happy to recommend it. It seems exceptionally good quality, very customizable, and the use of actual genuine Cherry MX switches uh, is, is really refreshing. If you've got any comments at all about the Corsair K65, or actually, do you have a keyboard that you recommend yourself? Make sure you stick it in the comments below. It'd be great to hear what kit you guys are using. I'm gonna be doing some more videos in the future talking about kits, uh, including, including headsets, mice, uh, monitors, everything that you can think of. Um, if there's anything that you wanna see, stick it in the comments below. Other than that, I hope you've enjoyed this short video. Thanks very much.